Hello, it's, uh, it's not, it's working now. Okay, okay, I'll repeat again. Yeah. So, um, good evening, everybody. My name is Xing Xuan, and today uh, I'm here to share about ERC4337 um, account abstractions. So, um, right now I'm working as a full stack um, web tree developer, um, building a protocol between algorithm and EVM blockchains. And today I'm going to share about ERC4337, which is also known as account abstraction. Right. So um, ERC4337, I think um, when it announces like um, a few, I, it's already uh, been in the space like for years, but um, this uh, EIP, and right now it's an ERC, right, is um, like just officially uh, deployed on, I think like months or last month. So it's like a few months thing. And when this ERC came out, there's quite a lot of hype about um, this thing. And you can see like, all over the Twitter for the for those kind of like dev um, Ethereum related kind of Twitter account, you see they um, tweeting about ERC four three three seven, and one of the reason is because this re, uh, this ERC is being um, like you see this kind of slogan in articles when it's like um, describing about the ERC four three three seven. It's being um, um, like promoted or uh, like being say as the proposal that could onboard the next billion uh, of users to Ethereum. Um, blockchain is a very good technology, um, but I think like the next step for the blockchain is definitely to, uh, is about adoption, right? So everybody is saying, okay, blockchain is very nice, but um, the, uh, like when, when we speak about this kind of conversations, adoptions is always uh, something that we'll, um, uh, that we'll discuss about. And one of the reasons that um, adoption um, is not going in that, like it can be better uh, in my opinion, um, but uh, because of the accounts, accounts part of Ethereum, when you first want to um, interact with uh, decentralized applications or you want to create an account in Ethereum, there are actually quite some problems that um, people might face. And for myself, as an example, uh, I face quite some problems when I'm creating an account. And I would like to share with you guys in, during the next slide, right? So, okay, the next slide is empty slide. Um, so this kind of reminds me that I want to ask um, questions to you guys as well. So what are the problems that you guys face when you firstly created an uh, account to join the Ethereum blockchain or to interact with some devs, right? Anybody um, have any problems that they face and they would like to share? Anybody? Um, yep, yep, yep. Yep, that's one. Any more else? Like three, like. Like it's not that familiar, right? And any any more? Okay, yep. So um, there's a few I would like to discuss here. So like the first one is like what um, this gentleman say just now, like create if account and handling the private key. So uh, for myself, right? When I firstly create um, a if account uh, in MetaMask, okay, I was like, I was always using um, email and password. And then when I firstly want to create an if account, I was like, okay, um, creating account um, should be simple. Uh, should not need it, like no tutorial is needed. I just download MetaMask, follow the step. Should be pretty user-friendly. And yeah, it is user-friendly, but there are some things still kind of confuse me, right? So the first thing is that when I um, create an account, I key in a password, right? And I thought, okay, that's the password for the account. But actually, that's the password for the MetaMask extension in your browser. And after you pass that phrase, right? And then it kind of give you a, a seed phrase, right? And a seed phrase is like draft seed phrase. And when I see about this, I was like, okay, okay, there is a password. Okay, and this might, like this looks like a real password. And after that, um, when I discovered about this, then I was like, kind of like, okay, if I, this Matama's account works kind of different with our typical web two accounts. 
Why? One of the reasons that kind of like um, concern me a lot is because uh, I kind of like change my password quite frequently um, when using um, apps or Web2 apps. And I kind of like, what if there's one day I forgot my password? Uh, it's okay. I have a recovery uh, email. I have my um, Gmail and then, or I like I KYC, right? So I can go with the customer service to get my account back in some ways. But in, in Ethereum or in the blockchain, most accounts doesn't work this way. You create an account and you are being assigned a private key or a draft uh, words seed phrase or mnemonic phrase, right? But those phrases are only generated once and you need to, and it's pretty hard for you to remember the private key. Uh, it's a bunch of strings, but uh, seed phrase might be a, lazy, a little bit easier, but still pretty hard, okay? So uh, that's kind of concern me because what if someday I write this in a paper and I lost it? And the funds inside the if account might be stuck in there forever. And what if, uh, what if my um, private key is like to somebody, right? And that also I have no, if they get the private key, they have all my funds. So that's like, there's no some, it's, it's not like the web two kind of thing where you still have a third party or centralized party who can, help you, right? They could help you in some ways. But yeah, this is one of the benefits of having something like centralized controlling. But uh, yeah, this is also one of the disadvantages of being decentralized. Yeah, so uh, this is kind of a really big concern to a lot of people who are using a Web2 kind of account. And the next one is gas fees. Okay, I remember this. So when I want to uh, do, like when I want to create an account, and that's like I want to do it because I want to stake some uh, tokens. And um, firstly, I thought like uh, this token, uh, this token I could uh, I could trade it somewhere. Okay, yep, it can be traded somewhere. But if you want to go to a centralized exchange to do all those things, then you will go through another round of creating accounts. But this time is easier. You, you use your email, you use your password, just that you need to do more security like, um, like your Google Authenticator, things like that. Okay, after it's done right, then you need to learn how to do P2P transactions to buy your coins. Not, I, I believe like most people don't like have, every, like have um, people around you are actually doing like selling Bitcoins for fire. Most of us doing, uh, we get our coins through P2P transaction in a centralized exchange right now. And you need to learn how to do P2P because it may sound um, like you need to trust the uh, centralized exchange as your escrow. And before you buy a token, you actually need to transfer your money like, it, like a bank transaction using your bank, log into your bank account, and then send the funds to the person who are selling you the, uh, the, the tokens. And you kind of want, you, so you kind of, before you get your tokens, you already need to spend, you already like take like some money out of your bank and you are not really sure like would it come back if you're a first timer, right? And then you need to go to a P2P and you need to learn like um, the safe way of doing a P2P transaction, okay? And that's not even you find your Ethereum account yet. Okay, after you buy the P2P, then you need to swap. And you, I mean, you need to like exchange to if maybe like if you are using the Ethereum, then you need to change to the native token, which is Ethereum, if. Okay, okay, now you already swap to if, but you have another problem. And like for me as a new, like when I'm a newcomer to the space, when I want to withdraw the month, I was like thinking, how can I withdraw uh, the token to my if account? And then I need to learn uh, to click the withdrawal button in the centralized exchange. And then there were like a lot of words, which um, I've like, it's my first time seeing, seeing them, right? So it's like, ERC-20, BEP-20, BP 2 and there's like Solana, there's a TRC-20, so there's like a lot of blockchains, right? And then uh, I'm really not sure which one is the correct one. And then, yep, and then if you select the wrong one, the funds is sent to the wrong blockchain, and then you need to, you need to buy your uh, fire through P2P again to swap into the correct native token, send it through the correct blockchain to the correct address. So this is really like quite um, some hassle. And if you, if you buy the wrong token, uh, initially when I, like, I, I thought I could use uh, USDT, right? So I, I buy some USDT um, because USDT, the withdrawal fees is lower. And then uh, at that moment, I remember, 
uh, because it's because I uh, that moment I thought TRC twenty could work somehow, but after I bridged it, uh, I sent to my Ethereum tokens, and then um, yeah, it's a different blockchain. And then I want to try to bridge it to the ERC twenty, and I want to try to bridge it. Then I found okay, I need ETH right now. I need ETH as gas fee, and then I need to go to this centralized exchange to buy ETH again, and then send it to my Ethereum account. Right. So things like this could happen. So it's like really um quite some hassle, gas fee and fund accounts. And there might be even some scenarios that you need different account for different uh, multi-purpose, right? So for example, um, somebody like uh, somebody would prefer that they have an account for just receiving funds and sending funds without doing any approval, any uh, contract interactions. And if they want to do some contract interactions, they will have another account, and the account is like they just put some of the funds and but to do uh, some basic um, contract interaction, but that kind of requires you to have multiple wallets and you need to manage them. Um, yeah, it could be a lot, uh, it depends, but um, for some people, this is also um, uh, some problem that they might need to face and they need to like remember quite a few um, phrases. So um, yeah, so for a bird eye view, for all of those um, things that I mentioned just now, you like this, Almost inside this diagram, you need to create an account. You need to con you need to handle the private key, and then you need to purchase the funds, and you need to pay the gas fees, and initiate the uh, you need to transfer funds, initiate the transaction, and pay gas fees, right? And then you need to wait for transactions, and you need to wait the transaction to confirm and and uh, before you continue, right? So all of this is um yeah, it's quite some hassle for some um new person. Uh, what if there's somebody who which is not tax savvy? Um, so it's actually quite some entry barrier uh, for them to join this ecosystem, right? So, and then people found this like problems like this can be solved using um, account extractions, um, which propose the user to use smart contract wallets instead of EOAs. So there's two words here, smart contract wallets and EOAs. Okay, so what is smart contract wallets and EOA? So I believe like smart contract wallet is pretty easy to understand, just a wallet um, based on a smart contract. And EOA is actually um, the account that we always use, um, like the account that you created with your MetaMask, right? This is the EOA, oh, okay, okay, it's louder. Um, this is the EOA account. And it's actually the account that control um, with the private key, and that's an EOA account. And there's contract accounts. So it's actually, um, this kind of accounts is actually a smart contract wallet. It's deployed on the network and it's controlled by the code. So um, some of you might uh, realize if you like, if you try to look at Etherscan or you um, try to check some um, smart contract address, right? You will realize that actually when we deploy a smart contract, the smart contract can actually um, receive funds. We can actually send funds to the smart contract just like how we send funds to other accounts. You just go to your MetaMask, type in the account address, and then you just send. And you can send the funds to the smart contract accounts. But this also depends that if, is it that your smart contract account is already um, ready to receive these funds? If the smart contract account doesn't have any functions written to withdraw the funds, then the funds sent to the smart contract account will be, um, yeah, will be stuck for that. It will, it will be stuck um, with the smart contract account. Yeah, so um, this is one of the reasons why we need a standard for this kind of smart contract written. So like ERC-20, like ERC-721. Actually, all of these are just smart contract codes, but because um, they need to use a standard so that everybody use, this, use these functions, like these functions is written with the same parameters, is written with the same um, contract names. And this would be easier for um, dApps to interact with them. And yeah, and then account extractions, we have this um, ERC-4337, which is, uh, we just launched like months ago. And here are some examples why smart contract wallet could be a better, uh, could be a better wallet than a typical EOA wallet. So um, firstly, permission controls, okay? For EOA, if you have the private key, you can do everything. You, I mean, you can do anything, right? And then, but if contracts accounts, um, some of them, like this is kind of like a multi-sig wallet kind of idea. So you have a list of accounts, right? And in order to approve a transaction, for that transaction to, to be executed, 
you will you can specify like you need like three out of five signers for that um transaction to be approved, and this kind of puts some security um for that wallet, and this is like uh what we like is like the multi sig wallet, and you also can do batch transactions right with contract accounts. So for example, if you want to like do something with a token, your ERC twenty token, you want to do something with your token, um maybe you want to stake into a pool, you will, you will realize before that you really stick into the pool, you kind of need to sign two transactions. The first one is that you need to sign an approval transaction to approve this amount of token to be um, delegated to uh, some spender. And then that spender can only spend that amount of tokens that you approve. Okay, after this transaction, then you would be, and then this next step is like to sign the real transaction, the real staking transaction, right? Okay, so, but with contract accounts, um, this kind of transactions can be bundled together as a batch. You can like, you can just, instead of signing two accounts to do that interaction, it can be um, programmed to, um, only, to only like, with just one confirmation on your wallet, just one approval, and then you do the approving of a token and you also transfer the token, okay? And the other one uh, is like account recovery. So remember that I say like, um, if the private key is lost, and then your EOA, uh, you, if you don't like, you don't store your private key uh, properly, if the private key is lost somewhere, then yep, the funds may be stuck on the account. But with contracts, we can do something called like account recovery. So this is something like when you create an account, you can specify like, um, I have a few address. Okay, this, kind, this address is my guardian. This address is my like, when I lost my private key, it's okay. Because this uh, account, as long as um, I have access to this guardian, this guardian could actually change the ownership of the contract um, back to me. So um, yeah, so losing your private keys or your seed phrase might not seem like that. Uh, that much of a big deal in this situation. And um, because it's smart contract wallet, right? So you can do everything as long as programmable. You can also like set transaction limits. Uh, like um, within a day, you can only spend like how many ETH, you can spend like 0 0.5 ETH. That kind of like um, protects your smart contract um, accounts as well. Yeah, so um, with all of the like introduction, um, uh, for the past like 10, 10 minutes. I'll, I'm going to like gather all of this and then to show you guys like two examples. So this example is about a Web3 game. A Web3 game implementing 4337 and the like account instructions and another Web3 game which is not implementing 437, right? And okay, let's look at um, what if this Web3 game doesn't use a 4337 account instruction pro, um, standard to, uh, it needs you to use an EOA to play the game. So firstly, you will need to go through the creating if account procedure, right? So you need to like create, handle your private key, find the account, things like that. Okay, so this is the first thing that you need to do. And after that, you need to find the account, right? And when you're playing a game, then Actually, what makes a game a Web3 game is that all of those transactions is on the blockchain. So let's say um, you, when you do some transactions, right, you may need to do a multiple transaction in a day or maybe in an hour, in 10 minutes. And with an EOA account, you need to like confirm the transaction every time. And, okay, and this is kind of like, it's, this is kind of some problem because you don't, you, it's like confirm a transaction every time is okay, but you also need to take care of your gas fee, right? So if you want to play a game, you need some money um, to fund the account. And that is like the money that is ready to burn as the gas fee. And that's, that will also stop, like because most of the people who like um, play games are like maybe high school or like they don't really like comfortable to spend some real money um, to play a game. I mean, before they, like, I mean, in the starting phase when they just like trying out the game, right? But yes. Before, like, yeah, you would need um, some funds in your account in this scenario, um, like when you're just starting out playing the game. And yep, you will need multiple wallets for different purpose. And then, yeah, you are un unable to access the assets if the private key is lost. So what if 
right now we have account instruction and this web tree game is being um, implemented uh, with the standard of ERC4337. Okay, instead of creating account before the game, like uh, the game can do something like you just log in, you just log in like maybe using email or password. Okay, um, the, the, the example that I'm mentioning here is like just a very general example. Um, it's a smart contract wallet, everything is programmable. And I'm just giving an example here, right? So when you first log in, uh, a smart contract account is being created. And it's created when you, it's created, it's not you, the one who created, it's the game created for you. Because um, it's a smart contract, every time when somebody like log into your game, and then it will just deploy a new smart contract account to this, um, to this, uh, to this um, person, right? And then this data is being saved in some database. And then, um, 4337 actually enables uh, us to have a paymaster. Okay, so gas fee handled by paymaster. As long as paymaster is being um, specified in the, in the smart contract account um, user operations, gas fee will be handled by the paymaster. So it's a Web3 game, everybody um, could play the game, and then it's kind of like a Web2 experience which you don't need to fund the account to pay the gas fees. And because it's programmable, a session key function could also be implemented to approve the transaction like automatically within a time frame. And like also like maybe a batch transactions, things like that, which um, I mentioned in the previous slides. And enable multiple wallet functions like transaction limits. It could um, because like it's your wallet, um, it's the wallet designed by the game, right? So the game could actually program some customized functions to it, like transaction limits, schedule payments. Uh, things like that. And then, yep, and then you it, also, it could also implement the social recovery function um, to help uh, somebody who lost their private key to have another recovery uh, person to help them to recover their uh, assets in the game. Okay, so um, here's the bird eye view of how it actually works for ERC4337. So firstly, um, there's, you will notice like something new. Instead of just use like, Instead of you just like um, send some transactions to the mempool, it actually goes through a user operation mempool this time. So um, every transaction um, using like 4337's uh, accounts is that you need to have a, it, there are something new, which is also known as like user operations. And user operations is actually similar with um, our like, okay. So MetaMask kind of abstract, like, like hide all of those sending, um, sending transaction stuff for you. And it's actually, if you go deep into it, then you'll find that it's actually kind of similar when you send a track session, the field that is needed to send a track session right now is actually kind of similar with the user operations. You need a sender, you need a nonce, and then the init code, um, some core data, and also um, paymaster. Um, there's a paymaster there. Uh, which is to uh, pay your gas fees, um, and then also a signature, a signature which is signed um, by the account that, um, like the owner of this smart, um, this smart contract wallet. So when we go back to it, so every, just imagine like every, every um, transaction right now is being submitted in this kind of form, user operations. So the user operations will be sent to the user operation mempool first, and then there's a bundle the bundler will kind of like bundle all of those user operations and then into a batch transactions and then um, send to the Ethereum blockchain. And then here's another more detailed kind of view. So an EOA, an EOA signs, um, okay, signature is something can be stored, right? So uh, EOA, uh, let's say I, the game kind of store the person um, signature and the signature is only like, is programmable and then I mean, they program to store some kind of signature. And then the signature is being attached with the user operations. So the user operations could be sent to the mempool and then uh, go through the bundle. And then there's like the, and then there's this entry point contract. Entry point contract is something which is only, a, a, there's only like one entry point contract in the whole blockchain, like verified, the only one verified. And then it's being, um, the bundle will call this entry point contract. And then after they call this entry point contract, the entry point contract will, will, go and will go to your smart contract wallet, 
which implemented the 4337, uh, 4337 standard, you kind of, it will send the user operations to the um, entry point contract, and then it will kind of like poke, poke the smart contract order. Okay, is this user operations, um, is it like valid? Okay, if it's valid, then we will go through that. Do you have enough of gas? And then um, do you have a paymaster? And then if there's a paymaster, the gas will be, um, will be um, handled by the paymaster. And then if it's not, then you will get uh, the gas from the user uh, and then um, validate user operations. Um, and then if it's all valid, then only the transaction will be executed. Yep, so after all of this kind of like technical introduction, so in the end, what's, what's um, ERC-4337 meant for the dev? It may be in future, there will be uh, more, four, three, more uh, like new wallets provider with the 4337 um, standard. And your application may need to um, adopt with this and prepare the integration with this kind of wallet providers. And the second is that um, you may need to, um, if you want to like some extra um, functions, um, you will also need to um, study this standard and then integrate your decentralized applications with this kind of standard such, such as like recurring payments. And what, what, what does ERC-4337 mean for the users? That means like in the near future or in the future, there will be wallet providers, like new wallet providers um, support 4337. So it's, it's, they will hide everything from you, make, making it very user-friendly, just like MetaMask. But um, the, the, the flow to use it may be kind of different and like a new MetaMask, right? Um, if it goes very viral, then you might need to learn the, how to use a new wallet, but mostly it will be the same and I believe it will be really uh, user-friendly. And then a more familiar kind of user experience when interacting with the dApps. Still remember um, the example that I, um, like the comparison example just now? Um, it will handle everything for you and then you can even do a, like 2FA and then a recovery. So it's a more familiar like a web two kind of experience for uh, accounts in Ethereum. Okay, so, um, yep, so, uh, yeah, I, Okay, take a photo. Yep. So um, here is some example which is already accessed in um, in like these few months. Uh, most of them are from the Ethereum um, hackathon. So the first one is So Wallet. They actually just raised like three million of funds for this, and this started with the uh, hackathon here. And then um, firstly, they started like a recovery a kind of account, and then I think right now there are small functions implemented. And there's Rhinestone, and Rhinestone is kind of like modularize um, the wallet. It's something like you there's a wallet, and then if you want a transaction limit, then you can um, integrate transaction limit, and then at some point you can um, uh, there's this is being done by the Diamond Proxy, so it's like you can upgrade your wallet with some features, and you can downgrade with some features, right? So um, it is quite um, interesting, and there's also um, Gnosis, right? Gnosis, okay. Novasis. Um, not sure if I'm mentioning correctly, but like Novasis is actually a, pro a project in, um, in Scale Ethereum um, Hackathon this year. And then it's actually, um, it's kind of like also um, like you can select some of the features, but it's more about security. Uh, customize your own preferable uh, security uh, for your wallet. And then there's Banana Smart Wallet, which did um, the, which they use um, zero knowledge proof to uh, with 437, um, I kind of forget like how's their demo, but you guys could check it. Um, if I'm not wrong, it's like um, it's like they use like two FA, and the two FA is being done through zk proof, and then there's like some two M two FA functions um, with the wallet. Yep, uh, I might be wrong, but uh, is but um, I'm just kind of remembering is something about zero knowledge proof, and then I yeah should be with something with two FA. Yep, and then. Of course, um, the if infinitism account extraction repo. So, which is um, this is like the official um, repo for um, account extractions um, from if infinitism. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, if you're a dev and you want to learn like how it basically works, you can check how their contracts is written and how they run their tests to have a feel of how yeah this is being done in um, account extraction. Yep. 
um, yeah, and then that's um, so far. That's my that's my um, um, introduction about ERC four three three seven.